Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be defining a word that is not properly understood, especially biblically wise, and that word is repentance. We're going to let the scriptures themselves define what repentance is, but before we begin, I want to read a few verses. And the first verses I want to read are Isaiah 28, 9-13. Whom shall he, he being God, teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them, Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go back and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken and then the next few verses i want to read are first corinthians chapter 2 12 and 14 12 through 14 now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god that we might know the things that are freely given to us of god which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth but which the holy ghost teacheth comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness with him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned now, this is the part I want to hone in on, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. Now, everyone has their own understanding of what repentance means, but we're going to let the scriptures define what the word means. And we're going to do that by using pegs and parallelisms. And I'll just show how pegs and parallelisms work throughout the study. So without any further ado, we're going to look at all word forms of the word, forms and tenses of the word repent. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first time it appears is in Genesis 6, 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Now I'm going to go to Genesis 6, 6 because I have it highlighted. And we're going to look at how pegs and parallelisms work. And, and, for, they're all conjunctions. It, 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 they're all the same. The Lord, me, him, they're all the same. Repented, repenteth, grieved. The scriptures define repent in this context in Genesis 6, 6 as grieved. And I'll just spoil it here. The scriptures also define repent as turn, but we will see that later on in the study. So let us continue on. So now, from now on, whenever the word repent or any of its um, tenses or forms comes up, I'm going to replace it with grieve and its forms and tenses. Genesis 6, 7, And the Lord said, I will destroy man who I, whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it grieveth me that I have made them. And it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, Lest peradventure the people grieve when they see war, and they return to Egypt. Wherefore should, the, wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out, to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath, and grieve of this evil against thy people. And the Lord grieved of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Now, here is the first instance where turn comes in at, but this is not the um, verse 
that defines turn. But we will plug in turn. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should turn. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Now, the interesting thing is the definition of turn means, and we will just look this up real quick. These will be the few words that we look up in the dictionary. To alter as a position, to change or shift sides, uh, to change, to transform, to alter or change, to change or alter in any manner, to vary. So as we can see what turn means, it means to change, or to change as from one opinion or party to another. So, with this, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should change or turn. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Now, the reason why grieve doesn't work really work in Numbers 23, 19 is, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should grieve. Well, grieve really doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the context hath he said and shall he not do it or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good you see how turn makes more sense than grieve in the context of numbers 23 19 but continuing on for the lord shall judge his people and grieve himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and that and there is none shut up or left. Now this is the thing. You can also use both um, definitions in the word for the word, and it will make sense in the context. For the Lord, for the Lord shall not judge his people, and turn and grieve himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left. And when the Lord raised them up, judges, then the Lord was with the judge, and delivered them out of the land of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it turned for it turned and grieved the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. Now you can also say for it grieved the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. It makes equal sense. And the children of Israel grieved them for Benjamin their brother, and said, There is one tribe cut off from Israel this day. And the people grieved them for Benjamin, because that the Lord had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. It turneth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me, and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. Now this is the thing as well, this is the Lord talking here in the first part. It grieveth and turneth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried all unto the Lord all the night all night. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor turn, for he is not a man that he should turn. Now see again, grieve doesn't make sense in the context of this verse and also the strength of Israel will not grieve for he is not a man that he should grieve well men grieve and so does the Lord so this is the thing though man turns but the Lord doesn't turn in the sense of you know man being flip-flop about his positions God is not flip-flop about his positions and Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul. And the Lord grieved that he had made Saul king over Israel. And when the archangel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord turned himself of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Aruna the Jebusite. You can also say, the Lord grieved and turned him of the evil. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land, whither they were carried captives, and turn, and the reason why I say turn is because we will see, and I will just do the cross-reference right now. The cross-reference to this is Second Chronicles 6.37. And we're going to see why I said turn. 
Because remember, line upon line, comparing spiritual things to spiritual. Because Second Chronicles six thirty seven is the same thing as First Kings eight forty seven. But let me finish reading First Kings eight forty seven. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives, and turn and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely; we have committed wickedness. Now Second Chronicles six thirty seven. Yet if they bethink themselves in the land whither they are carried captive, and turn. You see how turn is in the place of repent and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done amiss, and have dealt wickedly. Continuing, And God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it, and as he was destroying, the Lord beheld. And he grieved and turned him of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed, It is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Wherefore I abhor myself and grieve in dust and ashes. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it grieve and turn thee concerning thy servants. Now again, always check on the context of what's being talked about for the most part grieve and turn can make sense but in a lot of verses it really doesn't make sense one or the other definition is the correct definition and he remembered and he remembered for them his covenant and grieved and turned according to the multitude of his mercies now that could also be grieved according to the multitude of his mercies the Lord hath sworn and will not turn. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now again, this is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord has sworn and he will not turn concerning the priesthood of the Lord, the eternal priesthood of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal high priesthood. For the Lord will judge his people and he will grieve himself concerning his servants. For this shall the earth mourn, and the heavens above and the heavens above be black, because I have spoken it, I have purposed it, and will not turn, neither will I turn back from it. Now in that too, the scriptures what they do is in some instances where the other definition really isn't usable, the correct definition will be said in the verse as here, and will not repent, neither will I turn back from it. That's the same thing as saying, and will not repent. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man grieved him, or grieved or turned him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course as a horse rusheth into the battle. Now, this is the thing, since turned is already in the uh, verse, you can just say, grieved him of his wickedness. No man grieved him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course as the horse rusheth into the battle. But either or is still applicable. Thou hast forsaken me, saith the Lord. Thou art gone backward. Therefore will I stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. I am weary with grieving. And you can also say, I am weary with grieving and turning as well. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will turn of the evil that I thought to do unto them. Now again, if people, if the nation turns from the evil, then the Lord will turn of the evil that he thought to do unto them. And also, you know, you can input grieve there as well. If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then will I turn of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. And let that man be as the cities which the Lord overthrew, and grieved not, and let him hear the cry in the morning and the shouting at noontide. If so be, they will hearken and turn every man from his evil way, that I may turn me of the evil which I purpose to do unto them because of the evil of their doings. And as we can see, the context of the verse really dictates the definition 
of the word. Therefore now, amend your ways and your doings, and obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will turn him of the evil that he hath pronounced against you. The Hezekiah king of Judah and all Judah put him at all to death. Did he not fear the Lord and besought the Lord? And the Lord grieved and turned him of the evil which he had pronounced against him. Thus might we procure great evil against our souls. Truly after that I was turned, I grieved, and after that I was instructed, I smote upon my thigh, I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. Now again, let's read really again with turned at the definition. Truly after that I was turned, so Jeremiah turned from his stance, I turned, so he turned from turning from his stance, and he turned back to his original stance, and after that I was instructed. I smote upon my thigh, I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. So you see how after Jeremiah turned, he grieved? That makes more sense. If ye will still abide in this land, then will I build you, and not pull you down, and I will plant you, and not pluck you up. For I turn me of the evil that I have done unto you. Well... Let's re-plug that in. If ye will still abide in this land, then will I build you and not pull you down, and I will plant you and not pluck you up. For I grieve me of the evil that I have done unto you. Both work. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Grieve and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Grieve and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Now again, try plugging in turn, it doesn't work. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Turn and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Again, Children of Israel are in transgressions, and then they turn from those transgressions. And the Lord tells them to turn back again to their transgressions. So again, repent means grieve in the context of the verse. I, the Lord, have spoken it. It shall come to pass, and I will do it. I will not go back, neither will I spare. Neither will I grieve according to thy ways, and according to thy doings shall they judge thee, saith the Lord God. Or you can say, I will not go back, neither will I spare, neither will I turn, according to thy ways and according to thy doings. How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee, Israel? How shall I make thee as Adma? How shall I set thee as Zeboim? Mine heart is turned within me. My grievings are kindled together. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Grievance shall be hid from mine eyes. Now again, this is what I was talking about in the beginning about the word forms. Turnance is not a word. And the scriptures, they do this a lot with many words. Now there are exceptions to some words, but... For repent ends, grieve ends, it has the same ending. Turn ends is not a word. So grievance shall be hid from mine eyes. And this is in all instances of repentance as well. Continuing. And rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and turneth him of the evil. Are and grieveth him of the evil because, well, you can also say turneth as well. I was thinking of something else in the beginning. Continuing, who knoweth? Who knoweth if he will return? If who knoweth if he will return and grieve and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Now again. The context of Joel 2, I would have to look at it from the beginning. So I would suggest that you study the context of Joel 
to chap uh, chapter 2 verses 1 through 14 on your own to plug in the proper definitions for repent in the context of Joel 2. Continuing, the Lord turned for this. It shall not be, saith the Lord. The Lord turned for this. This also shall not be, saith the Lord God. Who can tell if God will turn and grieve and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? Now, turn cannot be used here because, again, who can tell if God will turn? Now, God is angry and he turns and then turn. So he turns back to his anger and turn away from his anger that we perish not. Now, this third turn away is not talking about that he turns away again. This is just completing the verse so that's why repent has to mean grieve in Jonah 3 9 and God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God turned of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them and he did it not now you can also plug in grieved as well and he prayed unto the Lord and said I pray thee O Lord was not this my saying when I was yet in my country therefore i fled before unto tarshish for i knew that thou art a gracious god and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and turnest and grievest thee of the evil for thus saith the lord of hosts as i thought to punish you when your fathers provoked me to wrath saith the lord of hosts and i turned not now the first appearance in the new testament and saying Grieve and turn ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Bring forth therefore fruits, meet for grievance. I indeed baptize you with water unto grievance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Turn and grieve, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But go ye, and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy, and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to grievance. Again, this is the importance of grievance as a Christian. It needs to be there. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they grieved and turned not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have grieved and turned long ago in sackcloth and ashes. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it, because they grieved and turned at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. And again, that's going back to Jonas chapter 3. He answered and said, I will not, but afterward he turned and went. For John, and again going back to uh, Matthew 21, 29, we'll just read this real quick in context. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, go, Son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not, but afterward he turned and went. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not, but the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye have seen it, turned and grieved not afterward, that ye might believe him. Now, Jen, now again, John, you know, was preaching the baptism of repentance, of grievance, and turning, and to turn from sin. Then Judas, which had betrayed him when he saw that he was condemned, grieved and turned himself, and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. Now again, I want to stop right here real quick with Judas, and I want to actually read this. Then Judas, which had betrayed him when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. Now again, interesting. Judas, he repented and he actually verbally said that, you know, he has betrayed the innocent blood. So he admitted his wrong. But this is the thing. He admitted his wrong to man instead of God. That's why Judas' repentance meant nothing. And also 
of course, for other reasons concerning Judas. But I just wanted to point that out. Continuing, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of grievance for the remission of sins. Again, the baptism of grievance for the remission of sins. And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Uh, grieve and turn ye and believe the gospel. When Jesus heard it, he said, he saith unto them, they that are they that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to grievance. And they went out and preached that men should grieve and turn. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of grievance for the remission of sins. Bring forth their for fruits worthy of grievance and begin not to say within yourselves we have abraham to our father for i say unto you that god is able of these stones to raise up children unto abraham i came not to call the right i came not to call the righteous but sinners to grievance again this is said twice in the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established woe unto thee chorazin woe unto thee bezeda for if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which had been done in you, they had a great while ago turned and grieved, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it. For they grieved and turned at the, repeat, at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. I tell you, nay, but except ye grieve and turn, ye shall all likewise perish. I tell you, nay, but except ye grieve and turn, ye shall all likewise perish. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that grieveth and turneth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no grievance. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that grieveth and turneth. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will turn. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he turn and grieve, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I turn and grieve, thou shalt forgive him. And that grievance... And remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Then Peter said unto them, Grieve and turn, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Grieve and turn ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come for the presence of the Lord. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give grievance to Israel and forgiveness, forgiveness of sins. Excuse me. Turn and grieve therefore this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Again, this is another good one. This is Simon the Sorcerer, you know, and this was when... Simon was the sorcerer was trying to pay off Peter for the power of the Holy Ghost. Now again, his thinking was wrong. You can't buy the power of God. So turn and grieve are both ex applicable in Acts 8:22. Continuing, when they heard these things, they ha they held their peace and glorified God, saying, "Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted grievance unto life." When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of grievance to all the people of Israel. In the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to grieve and turn. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of grievance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, grievance toward God, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is, again, the same thing with Judas. His grievance wasn't toward God. It was toward the Pharisees. And again, grievance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. God is the one who 
we are supposed to grieve to, not man. But showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should grieve and turn to God and do works meet for grievance. Again, turn doesn't work there. That they should turn and turn to God. Turn is already in the verse. So the definition is that they should grieve and turn to God and do works meet for grievance. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to grievance? For the gifts of God for the gifts and calling of God are without grievance. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not grieve, though I did grieve, for I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now again, you can also say grieve and turn. I do not grieve and turn, though I did. No, excuse me. It's just grieve because of this, though I did repent. So again, this is Paul saying, I do not turn, though I did turn. No, it's grieve. Grieve is the only definition. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to grievance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh grievance to salvation, not to be grieved or turned of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Now again, for godly sorrow worketh, the ending eth is an s, so godly sorrow works grievance to salvation. Again, this is why grievance is so vitally important. Continuing, unless when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and that I shall be well many which have sinned already, and have not grieved and turned of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God, peradventure, will give them grievance to the acknowledging of the truth. Now again, this is why grievance is important. Again, is because God gives you that grievance when you acknowledge the truth that you are a sinner and you're on your way to hell. Continuing, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of grievance from dead works and of faith toward God. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto grievance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. For, though, for those priests were made without an oath, but this is with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear, and will not turn. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now again, we read this again earlier. Continuing, For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of grievance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Interesting. That too. Uh, this is talking about Esau. And for he found no place of grievance, though he sought it carefully with tears. You know, that's interesting because your tears can be fake. That's exactly what this verse is explaining. You know, grievance comes from the heart. And it has to be sincere and genuine. Continuing, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to grievance. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and turn and grieve, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou turn and grieve. Turn and grieve, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. And I gave her and I gave her space to turn and grieve her fornication, and she turned and grieved not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they turn and grieve of their deeds. Remember therefore how thou hast received, and heard, and hold fast, and turn and grieved, and turn and grieve, if, thou, if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. These are the last five verses. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and turn and grieve. 
and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet turned and grieved not of their works of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk neither turn and grieve they of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of their fornication nor of their thefts and men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed blasphemed the name of god which hath power over these plagues and they turned and grieved not to give him glory and blasphemed the god of heaven because of their pains and their sores and turned and grieved not of their deeds so here we have it going back to the isaiah 28 verses for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. This is exactly what we did. You go from the first instance of the word to the last instance. And you will see how the scriptures build upon each other and that they are literally precept upon precept and line upon line and here a little and there a little. That means there's some in the Old Testament and there's some in the New Testament. And you have to search the scriptures and diligently study and compare these things. Compare spiritual things with spiritual. Now I urge everyone that has watched this video to go back and plug in these definitions. Because I am fallible man. I am not infallible. There are some places where depending on the context the definition will change and this was just a brief overview of plugging in grief and turn to make these verses make sense but please do go and look at the context of all these verses to make sure that turn and or grieve make sense and to plug in the correct definition that makes sense in their proper contexts I want to add this last part because I want everyone to be crystal clear on how to understand scripture without the help of man and dictionaries and lexicons and extra biblical books and everything else. First of all, you need to be saved and born again. And the way that is that happens is you sincerely repent, you sincerely grieve for your sins, and you sincerely believe and put your faith in the gospel that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for our sins he was buried and he rose again the third day and you need to sincerely call upon the name of the lord and ask him for mercy and salvation and after you've done these things in sincerity you will be saved and you will have the holy spirit living in you and as we see from the first two verses that i put in first john two twenty seven and John 14 26 and also in 1st Corinthians 2 verse 13 it is the Holy Ghost that teaches you all things and you don't need any man to teach you now please do read over these verses and pray to the Lord for wisdom and understanding and guidance in this matter and in all matters concerning the scriptures that's it for this video. Please do read all these verses and consider the things of which I have said. Thank you for watching.